Good day and welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today I wanted to talk about clear coat. I started some work on a team transporter yesterday, but it won't be ready in time for a video today. So rather than you guys get nothing, I thought maybe I would give up my secret. How I get a real nice glossy clear coat. First of all, what kind of clear coat do I use? I use an automotive 2K urethane clear coat. So I got a full on gallon of this. I first started using this stuff uh, when I bought all my Redline Shop paints. If you're not familiar with the Redline shop, they sell restoration supplies for doing Redline Hot Wheels and that includes all the original paint colors. So redlineshop.com will sell you all these Spectra Flame colors and then they'll sell you little mini bottles of clear coat and little mini bottles of activator. I don't remember the exact price, but I think it's around like $5 a bottle. So for the paint, that's probably worth it because you just need a little teeny bit. But for the clear coat, their little bottles are the exact same thing as this one gallon tin. And I've been using this tin ever since I started the channel. So it's probably two and a half years ago. And I'd say, I don't know, there's probably this much in here. And I have done some repairs on vehicles using the same tin. Like this will probably go bad before I finish it. But I need to buy clear coat in bulk unlike some of you guys. So when you buy a clear coat system like this, it usually comes with a gallon of clear and it comes with enough activator to cure one gallon of clear coat. So this is usually what you get for, I think it's gonna be about $80, I would say. So if you think of how many of these little jars you can fill for the price of this, not to mention if you're buying these little jars from Redline Shop, you buy little jars of hardener too, and they're the same price. So if you're doing a lot of clear coating, just bite the bullet and get yourself a gallon because it's gonna be way cheaper in the long run. So let's talk about mix ratio here. This clear coat asks for a four to one mix ratio. This mix ratio here is for a full size automotive paint gun. Now, as you guys know, I'm like a backyard painter. I don't really have any official training or anything, but I do know that when you use this mix ratio, in an airbrush, it doesn't work out very well. So let's mix some of that up right now and I'll show you what happens. Got a little cup pipette, four parts clear to one part activator. So that's some pretty thick stuff. Now let's go spray this. I'm just gonna scuff this up real nice, make sure it doesn't have any gloss on it at all. First and foremost. This is something I considered building into uh, possibly a cop car. Back in the day when I lived in Saskatchewan for a little while for work, they have Magnum police cars there and they were amazing. They popped the trunk and you'd have like shotgun holders and stuff for everyone to see. They were just badass. They had those seizure inducing uh, LED light bars that were just like outrageous. But I mean, they were cool. It was a cool looking cop car anyways, so. Now I'll go spray this and you guys watch me struggle and then I'll come back and I'll explain what happened. So that clear coat came out of the gun super slow it felt like. It doesn't spray nice at all. If you're getting this powdery looking stuff, you need to reduce your clear coat a little bit. So when I first started with the channel, I was having that very problem, especially on those 118 scale cars. I'm sure I got some old footage of me just chasing that powder around, trying to do a real wet coat on a big 118 scale car. and. Eventually it looks all right, but you can see this powder. It's just terrible. It looks it's just white. It's completely white So that's what happens every time I spray using the directions on the bottle So let me show you my mix ratio is what I use on these diecast cars with 27 psi to get these flawless clear coat results So let me show you what my mix ratio is I use two parts clear coat Okay 
one part activator and I use one part reducer. It's way more reducer than you would normally use in any kind of like automotive application but on this scale with airbrushes and what we're doing it's the perfect mixture. Also I did that so that I try to use all these products up around the same time. So this can it's a little bit more than twice the size of these but I'm going to use both of these at the same speed and I'll just have to get one of these eventually. So you could measure out your reducer and use less, but I just kept it easy. Two parts, one part, one part, and you end up with this nice kind of watery clear coat and you just got to try not to put it on too thick. Usually it takes about three coats to get a real nice flat, flat clear coat. So we'll go back to the spray booth. I'll throw this in the airbrush and you'll notice all this dried clear coat, this powdery looking stuff I've been talking about will just disappear and it won't come back. Just because this stuff sprays nice and wet and you'll get a real nice clear coat on it. And this orange peel and everything will just be gonzo. So let's go do that quick and you'll see. So I did one coat just with our reduced clear coat and look all that powder is gone completely gone that extra reducer and extra activator in there just melts everything in just perfectly so so now this project is back on track so like I said normally I do three coats so maybe we'll go give this one more coat of our reduced mix and uh, have a look at it then. So there we go, there's the Magnum. So we still got a little teeny bit of orange peel and that's probably just because that first coat we put on was so, so thick and lumpy, but I think any painter would be happy with that clear coat finish. So yeah, the only other thing to consider when you're buying these kind of products is the speeds. That's basically referring to how fast this is going to dry. You can get slow, medium, fast. I've used medium and fast so far, and I don't really notice a difference. I just paint my cars and throw them in the oven, either way. And then uh, my reducer. This is a medium. Again, if I had the choice of buying fast, I would have bought a fast. But this is all they had in stock. Normally, you want these two products to be matching brands as well. So the other thing I wanted to talk about in this video, since we're, uh, you know, we got some extra time here, is um, the little oven. You guys want to know more about the little paint oven, so let me go get it. So basically what this thing's made out of is just a box from the oil industry where there'd be a drill bit in here, and that's how they ship drill bits to locations so they don't get their cutters chipped. That's what this is, it's a drill bit box. These are just two indoor light fixtures, 100 watt bulbs, and then I cut a slot in here with a little piece of aluminum angle iron. The slot is from a hemostat, and then I use one of these to just hold it in place. And I can just close it up and forget about it. So this is the display for the probe that I have inside. This is just for like cooking turkeys and stuff. You buy these on Amazon. It just plugs into the side like a little microphone. And the probe will tell me what temperature it is inside the box. So right now this is still warming up because we just turned it on. But you can just see my probe in the back there. It's completely unnecessary, but I used it just so I could get some data. 
At the beginning, having two light bulb fixtures seemed like it would be the right amount, but um, after leaving cars in there for two hours and having them completely ruined, two is a little bit too much. So I might reduce the wattage, maybe 240 waters or 260 watt bulbs would work, but right now two 100s is just too much. How do I turn this thing on? Well, let me show you. I wanted the smartest possible switch for this. So what this is, it's a bathroom timer for the fan. So as you can see right now, it's on five minutes, 10, 15, 20. We can go up to four hours and once it's done, it's four hours, it just shuts off just like a bathroom fan because that's what this is. So two light fixtures, a fancy switch and a tin box and you'd have yourself the perfect little die cast oven with or without the probe. And believe it or not, this whole box is just sitting on top of an old stool. Yeah, those legs are just from an old bar stool where I just stole them, so. Yeah, as a complete unit, it's pretty slick. So there you go, that's a little bit of insight into the clear coating process I use and the curing process via the paint oven. I hope you learned something and maybe some of you guys will build some of these little paint ovens. If you do, please share your pictures with me. I put them on Instagram, you can just tag me in them. Just do like at Diecast Resurrection, that way I see them. Or you can post them right on Facebook. I'd love to see other paint ovens and see what you guys do with a clear coat all over my bench now. Just more love stains, of course. So I know this video is gonna help out a lot of people. So I appreciate you guys watching it, even though we didn't do a car in this one. Enjoy, enjoy the knowledge. I got the team transport in the works. So you guys will see that in a day or so. So anyways, yeah, if you got any more questions, uh, feel free to leave the old hashtag, ask me anything in your comment, and I'll try to get those answered in the video. Please leave a like to support the channel. Say hello in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.